Consider supporting my Patreon for only a dollar a month, and you get access to sketches, scrap content, and your name at the end of every video. Link below in the description. How's it going guys? Metrox63C from the Space Lounge here, and I wanted to talk about, or more rather, do a review on the Hyperkin X91 gaming controller. Um, right off the bat, I want to say that this is a tiny controller, so fair warning to people with bigger hands than me, this may be a uncomfortable fit for you. It's kind of uncomfortable for me in certain games, but I just wanted to throw that out, out there uh, at first for now. Um, but with that out of the way for it, um, I'd like to say that my first impressions on the uh, Hyperkin X91, and we'll be calling it X91 or uh, 91 from this point forward, is um, it's cute and tiny. It's the best way I can explain it. It's just cute looking. It's nice. Um, uh, the buttons on the back, the bumpers and the triggers, they're kind of flush with its design. The buttons aren't sticky, but not too clicky. So they're in the, for me, they're in a balanced state where they're perfect for me. Um, However, for me, there is a lack of undergrip. Uh, I think that's the right word to use, like uh, the whole gripping underneath the controller. Um, even for my tiny hands, though, that's a problem. Um, especially when playing things like Street Fighter V, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, um, Overwatch when I'm trying to mess around with the controller on the computer. Um, in certain games, it's a problem for it not to have any grip underneath because you, certain games, you just hold it differently. Um, and I find that it really excels in retro games like Enter the Gungeon, over, uh, right into the Gungeon, and indie games like Overcooked or uh, Am2R, uh, Rocket League is not an indie game, or might be, but. It handles well in Rocket League. The majority of the time I'm playing Rocket League on Xbox and PC, it's with that controller. It used to, it used to be my Afterglow, but I have to take that apart and open it, clean it. Um, so I've been using this Hyperkin for a while, almost a year now. Um, but other than that, that's my major first major. I think it's my first major gripe. Yeah, first major gripe is there's no under under grip. For this controller. Um, the said second thing I want to talk about is the flush buttons. I don't fully agree with it in majority of cases, and these are the cases where you'll say you're playing Overwatch or a fighting game, you can't tell what button you've just hit, so you end up thinking you're hitting a shoulder button, but you've actually hit the trigger. Um, they, for what they are, they're fine. Um, like I have no issues remembering where they are in Rocket League because you don't move for sporadically um, in Rocket League like you do in Street Fighter or Call of Duty. Um, but even then in Call of Duty your finger stays in that one spot majority of the time and it's usually your thumb that moves around. So that's not a big deal. Um, I do think when it comes to the shoulder buttons though, um, they could have bumped them out. And given the, the the triggers different springs because it in some cases I find that it just doesn't feel right when you're pulling them back for the trigger. The trigger just doesn't feel right in certain games, certain scenarios. Um, but all in all, like I said, for retro games or indie games, are just not as heavily competitive games or. Uh, and, and it's just my experience that if it's not a, a, like a really competitive thing or uh, or just something that's just for fun, then yes, this controller is great. Um, and I mean, for 30 bucks, I mean, you couldn't ask for much more. 
I mean, it has a lot more than, say, the Legend of Zelda Switch $30 controller. It has a lot more, like, in terms of, uh... Oh, hey, Etsy. Yeah, there goes my uh, Ruby's cat. She wants to say hi into the microphone. Um, but in terms of, like, the Legend of Zelda controller, uh, how, how I can compare it to that is that, that one doesn't have any rumble, but this one does. It has a decent amount of rumble for a little tiny controller, too. Um... Um, uh, in terms of the sticks, uh, to me they're spaced out enough for me. That might be a different story for someone with bigger hands than me. Like I said before, um, the sticks are file. They feel fine to me, and um, they just feel like sticks. Honestly, I, I don't know how to compare the sticks. They just feel really nice. Uh, I guess I, I'd say they're tight enough for me, they're not wobbly all over the place, if there's, there's a dead zone, they've tuned it, like, I, I can't, I can't tell, like, it, it's fine for me, um, I don't really know what else I could say about the controller, I mean, my two biggest gripes would be there's not enough controller for my hands, and I already have tiny hands, and the undergrip is an issue, and the buttons in the back are too flush with the back. It's just too sleek for the back. It, it really is. Uh, the A, B, X, Y are fine. The start select, or the back, however the Xbox things are. I'm remembering Nintendo buttons right now. Um, Xbox button, all fine. All nice and dandy. Um, I do find that the... Um, I do find that the uh, controller, however, does not work on the Steam Link. So if you're planning to get this, say, for your living room with a Steam Link, I would not buy it for that. Uh, because in my testing, it did not work. Now, Steam Link could have had an update, who knows, that supported its input. But for as far as I can tell, Hyperkin's uh, 91 does not... Um, X91 just doesn't work with Steam Link. Um, I'm sure that if uh, I'm sure that if you did it correctly with a, a dongle on the switch you could get it to work on the switch because I know there are things for that um, but in terms of PC and Xbox it works great and I still like it I think overall I still like it it's a cute little design it's Really, when you when you get down to it, it it's really um, meant for people who just want to have some casual fun, who want to have just a, a grand time with their friends who are next to them, stuff like that. So, if you don't mind dipping into a thirty dollar thirty dollar controller, that's really tiny and meant to just be for fun. I mean, if you find a way to enjoy, it, like in certain games, I found a way to enjoy this controller. If you find a way to enjoy for everything then good on you I mean you found a way to hold it than, better than I could because like I said for my hands I'm more of the traditional shaped controllers like the Wii U Pro the Switch Pro the Xbox Xbox Elite PlayStation etc in terms of that uh, it's either that or PC and mouse key keyboard and mouse for me and the Joy-Cons but even still like for this controller, it's about a Joy-Con and a half, and it just doesn't feel as nice as a Joy-Con. I don't know why. Like, in certain, in certain situations, the Joy-Con will feel better. And I, that also, that, that kind of boggles my mind a little bit. But, uh, other than that, I think that's all I can say about the X91. You know, it's tiny, it gets the job done. I wish there was a, there's a little more I wish that could be improved, but other than that, I'd still recommend it for party scenarios. Let me know what you guys think about my thoughts about this controller and um, if there's any other, any other products that uh, you've seen me use, if you want me to talk about them, how I feel about them. Um, I mean, I have my Logitech Artemis Spectrum headsets, so if you want me to talk about those in my past year with them uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas for art videos 
let me know down below in, in this, uh, the comments. Uh, any video ideas at all, let me know. And until next time, this has been Metroxix3C, and I will see you in the next video.